In 2010, I was appointed the superintendent of a large urban school district in Southern California. To be honest with you, it scared me to death. But that aside, I was fortunate enough to have a lot of dedicated and caring people throughout my career who have mentored me for this opportunity. On the other hand, I probably have had just as many who are equally surprised that I became superintendent. Which brings me to three students that I encountered as superintendent and the interactions I had with them that profoundly impacted me as an educator. The first is a young man by the name of Michael. In high school, I'd label Michael as your classic knucklehead, the kind of student that spent more time causing just enough trouble to annoy those trying to do good. He was an average student who was focused more on making friends than grades. Now, suffering the consequences of poor decisions his senior year, I remember him feeling hopeless and disconnected. Barely graduating and left behind by friends who received their college acceptance letters, he gravitated to the local community college where he quickly realized he could be removed from college as quickly as he was accepted. But as time passed, he eventually changed his ways. As he got a few years older and more mature, he began to make better decisions and eventually became an educator where he's dedicated over 25 years of his professional life to help others like him. And for all the heartache, trouble, and challenges, I take pride in his success because you see, I am Michael. My name is Jerry Michael Almandares, and I am proud and honored to be serving as the first Latino superintendent of the community I grew up in. But somehow after finding success as an educator, I found myself conforming to a system that I vowed to transform. I became the man, hiding behind a suit and tie, disconnected from the students and the communities that I serve. How could I let this happen? At a young age growing up, I had become apathetic towards education. My only connection to school was to spend time with friends, and I had approached adulthood without any certainty of what I wanted to do. So when I became superintendent, I wanted to help kids like me, and I was confident that I could. I wanted students to feel hopeful and not helpless. I wanted to be the pen that helped them rewrite their stories and shape their future. I figured with my background and going through school unengaged and disconnected, I would understand them and be able to connect with them. However, when it was my turn, I would fail. I failed to see students for who they are. I failed to connect with them and hear their stories. Instead, I focus on what they look like. In hindsight, I bestowed on them similar biases and expectations that were given me as a young man. Now, let me explain how I realized that I'd become disconnected. In 2014, I started a book club with students. The book club was an idea to model the importance of reading. I started with high school students and purposely look for books about current topics that would be relevant to students' lives and generate conversations. Conversations like the one that brought me together with a young man by the name of Eric. Now, I met him in one of my first book clubs. When Eric entered the room, he had what I would call a stoic look on his face, as if he was scanning the room, debating whether he should stay or leave. A young Latino, he entered wearing a Pendleton button up to his neck, baggy pants, and a hat. Immediately, I thought this guy must be lost. Within seconds, though, he was sitting in the chair next to me. And as we began to talk about the book, I quickly discovered Eric was exactly where he was supposed to be. After an hour-long discussion, he turned and handed me a folder and asked me if I would mind reading and providing feedback to a few stories he had written. I quickly discovered Eric was a poet, published author, and a passionate reader at the age of 17. How could I let this happen? I became an educator to help students. I had judged Eric before I even got to know him. But his participation in the book club provided me a gateway to connect with him. But how many more students like Eric were out there? Then a few years later, I crossed paths with Tamarian. I met Tamarian last year when I held a book club with Advanced Placement English class. And like Eric, Tamarian entered the room and immediately caught my attention by his appearance. I was curious to see if his intentions were to engage in our group discussion or retreat. As students engaged in discussion, I caught Tamarian reflecting on every word 
others were sharing and thoughtfully pondering what other students were saying. To Marion's courage and self-reflection and his desire to open up and share his personal story touched me to the core and I needed to know more about him. I was shocked to learn that at the age of nine, while most kids are enjoying their childhood, Tamarian was learning how to bag marijuana for sale. It was at this time he also discovered a talent for stealing, which escalated in a robbery. At the young age of 14, he earned the title of convicted felon. After those experiences, most kids would end up in jail, become a product of the system never to escape. Tamarian's story, though, is about courage, determination, and perseverance. Tamarian wanted more, and after those hard lessons, refocused on school and enrolled in advanced placement English classes with a firm goal of being the first in his family to go to college. Here was Tamarian, a student who has more courage than I could ever imagine, proving to me that he could overcome any adversity, and I was judging him as something as shallow as his appearance. Meeting Eric and Tamarian served as a stark reminder of my own experiences and the decisions that I made my childhood that could have taken my life in a completely different direction. I had so easily forgotten. I had buried my experiences in my past and allowed myself as superintendent to conform to a system that pushes students through rather than connecting with them. Now, how many educators like me were forming biases of students before getting to know them? And how easy is it as an educational leader to not have any contact with students like Eric and Tamarian? Both of these students had the good fortune of building connections with a few dedicated educators during their public school careers, and they were better for it. But as superintendent, I know that there was countless students who do not. When I was in high school, becoming an educator was the farthest thing from my mind. Not because I didn't think education was important, but because I didn't feel like I was worthy of teaching other people's children. Being a good student didn't come easy for me. And unfortunately, my experiences and my challenges in school aren't uncommon from many of the students in our public school system today. It was easy for me to forget the power of building connections with students, especially as a person who shares some of those same experiences. Will you join me in the call to action as educators to create meaningful connections with students? As educational leaders, will you join me in building an environment that encourages educators to engage with students? Will you join me in educating and leading with a flashlight, learning to ask questions rather than pass judgment? Thank you.